In this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it can be to draw a seemingly complex subject in a realistic manner. Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this video I'm going to show you how easy it can be to create a realistic drawing of a seemingly complex subject that's also shiny and reflective. Now this drawing is going to take some patience but we're going to simplify the process and make it easy so that if you want to create this look you can replicate exactly what I do here. Now before we get into the video I'd like to remind you if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and make sure you click on that notification bell so you're notified when new videos like this one are uploaded and if you like this video make sure you give it a like of course and if you're finally ready to improve your drawing and painting skills and take them to another level then I would encourage you to check out our awesome membership program which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media weekly critiques which are part of the members minute we also broadcast live lessons each week for an hour long and these are presented in series so we create finished pieces of artwork from start to finish and all of the live lessons are recorded and stored in our vault so you can go back and watch all of the live lessons we've ever produced and there's also a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers everything you need to teach in your classroom if you are a visual arts teacher all of that is included in the membership program if you want to check out the membership program and see if it's right for you we do offer a week-long trial for free and then beyond that a 30-day money-back guarantee to learn more about our program I'll leave a link in the description below you can check it out and if you want to just check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free and also get it on our mailing list I'll leave a link for that as well in the description below now for this drawing I'm going to be working from a photo reference it's a photo that I took of a spoon that I actually own now if you want to follow along with this photo reference I'll leave a link in the description below for that as well now I'll have the reference up on the screen throughout the process but of course if you want your own you know where to find it now with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the process. For this drawing, I'll be working on Strathmore toned gray sketch paper. This is a wonderful work surface to work on, especially when you're using white and dark media like we'll be doing here. This provides a nice medium toned surface to work from, so that'll allow us to push our values lighter and darker throughout the process. Now, initially, I'm going to be sketching things out with just a simple H graphite pencil. So we'll begin with a graphite pencil, but then we'll switch over to my Stadler Mars Lumograph black pencils, which technically have no shine, but they do have a little bit of a shine. We'll start with the HB pencil initially before switching over to the 4B and then finally the 6B. And I'll also be using a white charcoal pencil or what's left of my white charcoal pencil for the light values. And for blending, I'll be using an assortment of blending tortillas. Now I've already planned out my picture plane. It measures six inches across and it's eight inches tall. This is proportional to the photo reference. This allows me to figure out the positioning of the spoon on the paper, making comparisons between the negative space and the edges of the spoon. First, I mark the top of the spoon and then I mark the bottom of the top part of the spoon. Then finally where the lower handle ends. Then I find the width here with just a couple of loose marks of the top of the spoon and also the bottom of the spoon. Now I'll go ahead and mark out where the design portion of the upper part of the handle is located and then where the intricate design on the bottom part of the handle exists. Once I have these measurements in place, I can confidently start at the top of the spoon with the H graphite pencil, sketching out the difficult shape. This is somewhat of an egg shape, but you can see it flattens out quite a bit at the bottom. So I'm using looser strokes here, making multiple marks on the surface so I can find the correct mark. Then I'm going to simplify the edges of the outer contour of the spoon as I work down. So I'm not worrying about all of the details that I see where the spoon goes in and back out. I'll refine that in the next part of the sketching stage. I'll do the same at the bottom of the spoon, at the bottom of the handle. Again, just simplifying the overall shape with mainly straighter lines. 
Now I'll go ahead and draw a few contour lines for the shadow, the cast shadow that exists behind the spoon. Our light source is originating from the left side. This is gonna create an area of cast shadow on the right side. You'll notice that this shadow is not consistent in width as it works its way down the spoon. That's because the spoon, of course, is bowed up on the surface, creating some distortion in the shadow. Now, before I refine my sketch, you can see that I quickly lifted up some of the graphite material with a kneaded eraser. This leaves a faint version of the initial sketch that I created. Now, with a sharpened H pencil and a little bit of a slower approach, I can begin to ref refine the sketch. Now, this is a very complex subject, even though it is just a simple spoon. There is quite uh, a lot of changes in value. So instead of trying to figure out the patterns that I see, instead I'm focusing on areas where I see contrast in value. So in other words, where I see a dark right next to a light, I'm sketching a quick loose line there. We're going to refine the details of the spoon through our applications of white and dark material on the surface. So we don't have to really understand the pattern totally. We just have to pay attention to the shapes of dark and light. And in our final drawing, these will come together. These shapes of dark and light will come together to create the illusion of a very detailed relief on the surface of the spoon. You can see in areas also that I'm just planning out where I'm going to have a, an area of highlight and an area of shadow. So again, we don't have to draw all those little tiny intricate lines that we see, just plan out the areas of contrast. Now on the top of the spoon, I'm going to go ahead and again plan out the areas of contrast that I see. So you can see I'm marking out the two strong highlights that exist here. And then I'm just drawing some lines again where I see contrast and value, even if these contrast areas or these contrasting areas of value are very subtle. Now with my more detail oriented sketch in place, again, I'll revisit with the kneaded eraser, just lifting it up lightly. So I can still see the drawing, but it's quite a bit more faint. Now I'm going to start with the HB black pencil and I'm just going to start with a very light application and one of the things that you need to keep in mind if you do decide to tackle this drawing is that you have to have some patience. So this is going to take a little bit of mental energy. Um, what I like to do is I like to work very slowly and work for about 10 or 15 minutes and then take a three to five minute break looking at my drawing. This allows me to take the drawing in pieces, which makes it uh, a little bit more easy to complete the drawing, giving my mind a little bit of a rest. So as I'm adding this very light application of material on the surface, I'm thinking about the darker values, of course, but I'm also leaving open the areas of highlight because the white charcoal will not cover over the top of a graphite pencil or this black pencil. So we have to be mindful of where these highlights are located so that we can add the white charcoal in those locations. Now you can see I'm starting to plan out some of the slightly darker areas with another application of the HB Graphite before switching over to uh, the Blending Tortilla. And with this, I'm gonna start blending some of the material into the tooth or texture of the paper, creating more of a smoother appearance, which is more in line with what we see on the spoon. But even though I'm using a blending stop here, I am thinking about the blending stop being a mark making tool. So I'm continuing to go back and forth between my photo reference and the drawing surface, continually making comparisons between what I see and the marks that are developing on my paper. Now, before we go any darker, we'll go ahead and switch over to the white charcoal pencil. Here, I'm going to use this pencil to, of course, put down those strong highlights that exist here at the top of the spoon. And I'll also start to put in some of the subtle highlights as well. Now, one thing you'll notice in the development of this drawing is I like to accentuate or make the contrast a little bit stronger in my drawing than it is in the reference. So I'm gonna to try to pick up on subtle details that I see in the spoon or in the reflection that I see in the spoon and I'm gonna bump those up just a little bit. So I'm gonna make the contrast just a little bit stronger. Hopefully this will make our drawing a little bit more interesting than the photo reference. 
Now, this is the stage of the drawing where you really want to get those light lights in here before going dark. Again, this is due to the fact that the white charcoal will not cover over the top of the pencil material. Now, I'm going to use a different blending tortilla. Mine looks like it's dirty, but it's not. And I'm going to use this for blending some of the light values. Now I can switch over to the 4B graphite pencil. Well, this is actually not a graphite pencil. The 4B black pencil and start making some of the values a little bit darker. It, in this part of the process, I'm going to start creating some of those uh, subtle changes in value in some of the dark locations. So if you look really close at the photo reference, if you can bring it up on an iPad or a tablet, you can zoom in real close and see all of those subtle differences in value. This is what I like to do when I'm creating a drawing. And again, I'm going to bump up the contrast just a little bit so that there's a little bit more detail visible in my reflection. Now, as I mentioned before, the light source is originating from the left side. This is creating highlights on the left side of the edge of the spoon and also highlights on the right side of the edge of the spoon. But you can see there's also a darker edge that goes right around it. But it's creating darker shadows in the middle portion of the spoon. So at the lower part and the upper part, of course, we see those strong highlights there close to the bottom. But you'll notice that the darkest values that we see here are on the bottom and the top. Now, of course, I'll give this a quick blend with one of my darker <laughs> blending tortillas or one of the ones that I have re reserved for darker values. And then it's back to the white charcoal pencil. We'll go ahead and put in a few more highlights and areas of slightly lighter value. And if you look closely at the reference, you'll notice that uh, this spoon has been used quite a bit and the teeth <laughs> of the users of this spoon have uh, scratched it up quite a bit. So we're going to have some stray marks added here with the white charcoal pencil to indicate some very small surface scratches. These little touches, of course, are going to add some realism to our drawing. We can really see those scratches on the outer edges of the strongest highlight. A few more marks are added with the white charcoal before switching over to our darkest pencil. Now in this case is the 6B black pencil. This is going to represent our darkest value, so we're going to use this pencil in the darkest locations that we see. And again, this pencil gives us the opportunity to increase the contrast and create a little bit more variety in the reflection. And like I mentioned before, our darkest values exist at the bottom part of the spoon and also the top. So this is where we're going to use this pencil the most. And with the addition of this darker pencil, our highlights appear a little bit stronger and we can see that we have strong contrast here. So for now, we'll go ahead and start working down the spoon. You'll notice that I'm working from the top of my picture plane down to the bottom. This will help keep the palm of my hand out of the way of the drawing to prevent any smearing. But as added reassurance, you can see that I've also slipped a piece of paper underneath the palm of my hand to prevent this as well. Now, this next section underneath the top part of the spoon is quite a bit darker. So I'm starting here again with the HB graphite pencil, but I'm applying a bit more of the material here initially. And again, in this section, we don't have to really worry about the details. We are just allow the details to come out of the drawing. So basically, I'm just concentrating on darks and lights that I see, and I'm placing those darks and lights in a similar location on my drawing. So I'm not getting wrapped up in all of those intricate details. If you do, you'll either end up with a drawing that appears really stiff, maybe even a little bit cartoony looking. So allow yourself some freedom, 
but also just pay attention to the darks and lights, the shapes that you see, and just place them in your drawing in a similar location, and you're gonna end up with a representational image. Now, after adding some of the highlights with the white charcoal, I've switched over now to the 4B graphite, just like we did on the upper part of the spoon. Now, of course, having a nice sharp pencil is important here, so uh, you might want to uh, frequently sharpen your pencil so that you have a sharp tip. And if you're having trouble um, replicating what you see on the drawing surface, you may consider making your drawing a little bit larger. This will, of course, help you to get some of those shapes in place a little bit easier. Now, just as we did on the upper part of the spoon, we'll switch over to the 6B pencil and increase the contrast. Of course, we're only adding this dark, darkest pencil in the areas where we see the darkest values in this section. The blending stump can be used, of course, to create transitions of value and also to knock back some of the highlights as I'm doing here. Now the next section as we work our way down the handle is quite a bit lighter. I'm concentrating on the upper part of the handle first. So instead of starting with the HB pencil in this section, I'm actually starting with the white charcoal. Now graphite pencils and the black pencils that I'm using will go over the top of the white charcoal applications. Just keep in mind that the white charcoal cannot go over the top of graphite or black pencil applications. So we have the benefit of adding quite a bit of light value here and then we can knock it back or actually draw lines right over the top with our black pencil. We'll go ahead and add some of the highlights down here at the bottom handle or the bottom part of the handle. And then we'll switch over to our HB black pencil. And I'm gonna go ahead and start defining some of the ridges that happen up here. Now, if you look closely at the reference, you'll notice that there's an extra ridge on either side of the main bulge. I'm deciding in this case to leave one of those ridges out on either side. So mine has actually two ridges on either side instead of a three, which is actually on the spoon. Now in the final drawing, you'll notice that this doesn't matter at all and the drawing communicates the subject rather well. So this is a situation where because my drawing is relatively small, again, just measuring six by eight, I'm choosing to leave out some of the details while still communicating the essence of the subject. Now again, our light source is originating from the left. This is creating a little bit of a uh, area of core shadow on the right side of the bulge at the bottom. So we're gonna lift up a little bit on the pencil as we get closer to the light source on the left side. Now we can use our blending tortillan or blending stump, whatever blending tool you have, and work the material into the surface. Again, we're gonna allow some transition between some of the strong highlights at the top and some of the darker shadows at the bottom. Then, as you might have guessed, I have switched over now to the 4B black pencil. Again, this is going to increase the contrast and make some of those nice shadows a little bit richer. And as we get to the bottom of the handle here, we can see that strong contrast is communicating the, the intricate ridges that happen down there at the bottom. Then again, back with the white charcoal pencil, just adding a few more highlights here. And then finally, again, the 6B pencil is used to make the areas of darkest shadow quite a bit darker here. And here, if you compare the reference to the drawing, you can see just how much I'm bumping up the contrast. All right, now working on the uh, final, the lower part of the handle of the spoon here. Again, we're going to start with the HB pencil in this section. We'll work our way all the way to the bottom, and here again, there is quite a bit of detail, but instead of focusing on the detail, we're gonna focus on the relationships between darks and lights and the shapes that we see. So it might be beneficial to put out of your mind that you're drawing a spoon, or even that you're drawing this detailed relief section on the spoon, and instead just concentrate on the shapes that you see. This is absolutely key to drawing and painting.
Before adding any of the highlights, we'll go ahead with the blending tool and uh, smooth out some of the graphite applications. And I should say the black pencil applications, these are not technically graphite pencils. And then of course we'll add the highlights over the top. Again, since we have a light application that's been gently blended, the white charcoal pencil will go over the top of these applications. You just want to be careful if you have a really dark area, you really can't back off of that without erasing or lifting up some of the black pencil from the surface. Now, of course, there are some imperfections and little cuts and ridges in this section of the spoon, very visible here. So we'll go ahead and add those before switching over to our 4B pencil, making the values even darker. And even though I didn't draw out the patterns that exist here at the bottom of the handle of the spoon, you can see that they're, they're basically coming out in the drawing just based on the relationships of darks and lights. Of course, it's not exactly the same as what we see in the reference, but it's enough information for our viewer. Now, of course, we'll make some of the values a little bit darker here, this time with the 6B pencil. And then a few more highlights on the bottom part of the handle here. Now our spoon looks like it's floating, so let's add a shadow to, uh, to make this uh, a lot more realistic. For this, I'm going to go ahead and start with the 6B pencil. Now you'll notice on the cast shadow at the top part, underneath the top part of the spoon, there is a little bit of a fade that happens. There's a transition. So I'm going to release a little bit of pressure as I go outward from that. But the rest of the shadow is pretty solid. It is slightly lighter in the middle portion where a little bit of light gets underneath the spoon. But for the most part, it's a pretty solid shadow beyond the upper part. And then with the blending stop or blending tool, I'm going to go ahead and smooth out the edges a little bit at the top and also work the material in in the areas of cast shadow. So even though I'm going around the edges right now, I'm also going to blend the, the shadow itself, trying to get rid of all those little specks of paper that are still visible from my application. Now it's time to clean up the drawing with an eraser. I'm using my Tombow Mono Eraser just to lift up any remaining visible graphite lines. And now our drawing of a spoon with black pencils and white charcoal is complete. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope if you drew along with me that you're pleased with your results. Thanks again for watching. And as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.